This is a warning from God. If you do not get baptized, you will go to hell. And everyone that says it's by faith or by a prayer, you have been deceived by false teachers. This prayer is a man's prayer. It is not doing the will of God. God commanded us to be baptized. You must ask for forgiveness before you are baptized of all your sins and stop doing them. Then become baptized. When you become blameless from not sinning no more, you receive the, the um, Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and then you will be able to speak in tongues you have to be blameless. The only person that was sinless is Jesus. You have to be blameless. And then I'm going to prove to you, the thief on the cross was baptized. That's right. Dear God in heaven, I'm a sinner. I admit it. And I can't save myself. I deserve to go to hell. But right now, I'm sorry for my sin. I confess my sin. I repent of my sin. And Father, I ask you to wash me in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse me from every sin. And Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my sin. I make you my Lord. I give you my life. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Lead me and guide me. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For further prayer. You are not oh, saved if you did that. You are not saved. You're not reborn again with the Holy Ghost. You have to. Well, he started off. Ask for forgiveness. Then you stop sinning, like I said before. Then you are baptized. If you're not baptized, baptize yourself in your own house and your family. And that's in Scripture too, in the book of Acts. If you walk through life thinking you're a Christian because you just did what he said, you did not do the will of God. It is a commandment of Jesus Christ to be baptized with water. And when you repent and all your sins are forgiven through the water of baptism, then the Holy Ghost will enter you. You will be baptized with the Spirit. Do you understand? When you are to leave this earth, you are to be a blameless person. You have to be that perfect to be part of the Bride of Jesus Christ. Period. The whole New Testament speaks about it. But when you start doing the sinner's prayer, you got only the first part right. You forgot to have your baptism. And if I don't warn you, do you know there's a raft that goes on people that doesn't spread the gospel and tell the truth to people that they're doing it the wrong way? And all you that say, oh, call in the name of Jesus. You can believe in the name of Jesus all you want when you don't do his commandment of being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you are quenching the Holy Ghost. And when you quench the Holy Ghost, you're going to be in danger of a blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. If you do not receive water baptism and the Holy Ghost and will sit there and say, it is only by way I think and believing that I will go to heaven if I just believe. I don't have to do that water baptism, anything. This is what Jesus says with his own words. Jesus' own words. Now, we're, we're in John chapter 3. Um, we're going to go from, I, I want you to read the whole chapter in its entirety. You throwing a sentence here to confirm your thinking of Scripture is hindering and people are losing their souls because of your opinion and not of the facts and the truth in the way of God's own word. John chapter 3 verse 3 
Now, this is about um, Nicodemus, and he was a uh, he was a man of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And people will say, no, it's it's if I believe in God that he died on the cross for me, I'm, I'm already baptized. No, you're not. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is the flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit, meaning God's purity. You have to be that pure to enter into heaven, meaning blameless, which is all through Scripture. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So, is everyone who is born of the Spirit. You're free, meaning. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify, what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. I have told you, earthly things and you do not believe how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things no one has ascended to heaven but he who has came down from heaven that is the son of man who is in heaven and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life this is where all you get it wrong. You say, well, that's all I need. And you stop reading. You stop reading. You stop reading. John chapter 3, verse 15. This is where you stop reading. And your error and your lack of knowledge will get you into hell. Because this is what the whole New Testament is about. We needed a Savior. He came. We needed to have repentance of our sins and to be washed away with water first so that we can receive. That is the belief. We can receive through the repentance of sin and the washing ways of sins through water on this earth that we receive after we repent and stop the um, sinning and washed away from our sins. Receive the Holy Spirit. The key word, Holy Spirit. You cannot enter the kingdom unless you are born of water and the Spirit. I'm telling you, he took your place on that cross. That's why he went there. As for you to look, look at this man did for you. Look at God did for you. You keep following these false teachers. They're all over TikTok. That is a cesspool of hell. So, here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And that is by doing the will of God. We are commanded commanded by God to go out and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come into the light lest his deeds should be exposed. 
but he does not but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen and they have been done in God. But people will stop there at that paragraph. Doesn't say anything about baptism, Christine. Um, you have to continue reading the whole chapter. You cannot read a book at a paragraph here and a paragraph there and get a whole sense of what is being said in the context. If you don't examine the book in its entirely, it's your, your soul that's in danger. Now, John chapter 3, 22 here, right after our, after these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea and there he remained with them and remained with them and baptized. Now, John also was baptizing in a, 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 a near Selim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, for John had not yet was not yet thrown into prison. Then arose a dispute between some of John's disciples, the Jews, about purification, and they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing and are all coming to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. Are you above Jesus Christ? What was the point of all the disciples? What is the point of the... He said John the Baptist is the greatest prophet that ever existed. Have you even thought why? If you would have read this, you would have figured out why. You have to be born of... This. You have to be reborn again through the repentance of your sins. And for you have to ask for forgiveness. And you have to be born again of water, then when you are a blameless person, you will be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you are not, you are not speaking in true tongues. And I'm telling you, there are so many people going to hell that think that saying that sinner's prayer, that they're going home and they're not. You have to do the will of God. What happened when Jesus did his baptism what 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 happened there you guys excuse me jesus was sinless so why did he get baptized scripture tells you why john the baptist prepares the way that's why he's the greatest prophet that ever existed and Jesus states that himself. Matthew chapter 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, that means stop sinning, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. And then he quotes Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out from Jerusalem and, and all of Judea and the whole region of the Jordan confessing their sins. They were baptized him in the river Jordan. No one can get it through their mind of the multitudes that were baptized at this time. Multitudes! So, I, I'm going to go to the baptism of Jesus now. You can read that whole chapter. Not a sentence here, not a paragraph here. Because the very next sentence after the paragraph where you think you got it right, you completely miss the mark. The baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying... I need to be baptized by you, 
and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Did you just get what he just said? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. This is where everyone loses it. When you say you don't need to be baptized, you miss something that happened by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And this whole situation here of importance that you just disregard. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water at that moment. Heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Everyone heard the Father's voice and seen that descending, the dove descend. Descending like a dove, the Spirit of the Father. You mean to tell me you disrespect this verse if you don't do the will of God? At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God. The Father, meaning descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. But you need to just believe in his name to be taken to heaven. But... I just read to you what Jesus says here, that you cannot enter. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you are baptized. Most, now this is John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You have to be part of Him now. Is it that difficult for the majority of people not to understand the importance here of this? Now, what people, there are people going around saying, now, I will not follow um, Paul's teaching, Peter's teaching. I follow what Jesus says because Jesus said, if you believe on me, then you are saved. Um, there's more to it. You didn't read the whole chapter, the whole book, and it's entirely to get the meaning. Jesus came to me and he said, this is a generation of Pharisee sentence scripture readers. The Pharisees tried to throw the law at Jesus at everything he did. You can't do this because the law says that. You can't do this, that. You, you can't walk this way. You can't talk this way because the law states it. And Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. All would perish if they lived that way. From the law. And if. I, I, it's so hard for me to even speak vague with people anymore. Because what I'm saying. The average person that read the New Testament. Would know what I am talking about. And what Jesus talked about. The works of the law. Works. Just, well, we don't have to work at doing anything. 
I guarantee you, if you don't spread the gospel and you know the truth, that you need to be baptized and that sin is forgiven through Jesus and that his father sent him here because they loved you so much and you reject the baptism through water to get to the spirit of the Holy Ghost, you are borderline blasphemy of the Holy Ghost if you do not get baptized. There are more than one way, and it states it in the Bible, in Matthew, to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. By not following a direct commandment of God, so you believe in Him, but you don't believe in in everything of the righteousness he did. Do you understand? And I will read that to you. The Apostle Peter also made it clear that baptism is a commandment for all people. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and of the Holy Spirit Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 I'm going to tell you guys these false teachers and people that do not read scripture the whole New Testament is about the baptism even after the crucifixion the cruci crucifying of Jesus it still is about the baptism When Jesus was with them in Acts, after he arose, they baptized. Now, I'm going to tell you something which, which a lot of you probably don't know about. Um, in Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 through 48, okay, they receive the Holy Ghost. The disciples received the Holy Ghost. But they also received an outpouring on people that, the people that were not baptized yet, received the promise of the outpouring of the Spirit that Jesus promises in the book of Revelation. And, um, and um, Isaiah also talks about that. Um, We are in the end of days and his outpouring of his spirit and it states on all flesh. People will use this to say you don't need to be baptized but then they stop reading it. But I'm going to tell you Peter knew about this and the disciples knew about this was the outpouring of of the spirit that Jesus promised in the end of days to come because he even said every day we're basically living in the end of days and when you don't read scripture and study it you don't know how it can affect your soul and where it goes because you don't read it for yourself if you can read all your text and, and watch TikToks and go from one to another, by the time you're done with an hour that, you could have read the whole books of Acts and had the facts. Now, when the outpouring came of the Holy Ghost onto them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they were baptized. 
Well, then how did the other people that weren't even baptized get the Holy Ghost on some of them? Because that, again, was the promise of the outpouring of the Spirit that Jesus talked about. In the end of days, your young men will dream dreams, old men will have visions and dreams, and your daughters will prophesy. That's what that's about. But to receive the Holy Ghost, Peter instructed them, since this occurred to them, you must be baptized. And I'm going to read that for you. And what I'm about to read to you is believers did get the gift of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. But then Peter right here, Acts 10, verse 34, then Peter began to speak, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to you, sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did, in the country of Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. His father rose him from the dead. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. God chooses us, and, and that's through the whole Bible. God chooses us. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Now that's just through his name how powerful it is. Do you understand what was just said? If you are not understanding what you are reading in its entirely, you will get it wrong. The power in his name, you guys, it is so horrible out there that people believe they're going home and they're not. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Whatever you ask in his name that is of God's will that lines up with scripture, whatever you ask, he will give you. But while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a while. There was like 3,000 people that were baptized that day. Just because you believe in Jesus' name and what he did, you have to do everything that Jesus commanded you to do, including being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If you do not do this, you are not going to heaven. You're going to perish. Which, it brings us to this. When Jesus came in an open vision to me, 
and said, Tell them, Break bread with me. After this, in Acts, Peter had them break bread. What does that do? I'm going to read to you Jesus' own words, what breaking bread with him does. And he tells us to do this. He tells us to do this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to a specific thing. What Jesus says happens when you break bread with him. And I will go into about you do not take the blood of Christ and throw it on keys, demons, people. That's why water baptism is important. And then you are baptized with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, the fire. Do you understand? And this will tell that you will offend him by doing this. And you are told to take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He said, do this in remembrance of me. I don't know about you, but if God asks you to do something, I think you should. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy, unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, not respecting For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another, but if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order. I'm going to tell you, this heals also, and it awakens the sleeper. If you are asleep in God, you will be awoken. Now, it was said that Jesus says this, Manna was given to you while you were in Egypt, but the bread of life, meaning Jesus, came from the Father, which is Jesus. And he does state, and you've got to read the whole scripture, I cannot compress the whole Bible because you refuse to read it. And in refusing to read it, Anywhere you flip in the New Testament, baptize, baptize, re receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But you say, oh, it's through faith. When I just read in the book of Acts, read the whole book of Acts. It talks about the angel visitations. It, it talks about people who believe Jesus Christ, but the outpouring of the Spirit on them, they can't receive the Spirit within them unless you are baptized with water and then you repent of your sins, stop doing them, and ask for forgiveness for them, then when you do that, then you receive the Holy Ghost. And then with receiving that, you become the bridegroom, meaning Jesus Christ, 
a spotless bride for him. You become that spotless bride that they talk about through the whole Bible. He said he's coming for a spotless bride. If you are part of his church and you do the will of his father, because all through the Bible, do the will of my father, do the will of my father, I do the will of my father. Are you going to do the will of what Jesus did and through in the father? Because if you're not doing the will of God, you're doing your own will or, or Satan's. And it's, and it's that clear cut. If you are not baptized, you will perish and you will go to hell because you want to buck up and you won't, and you spread these lies and rumors to other people. I don't know about you, but I baptized my whole family because the fear of this very thing of people going to hell, even my great nieces and nephew, nephews, I baptized because we're commanded to do that. And, and then you want to bring up other subjects? We're bringing up the thief on the cross now. He was baptized, and I'm going to prove it. Jesus being of pureness and doing the God's, the Father will. He cannot be a liar. God can never lie. Then one of the criminals who were hanged, blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. That's blaspheming. But the other, answering, rebuking him, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? So he already knew that Jesus was God, and then questioned the guy that was blaspheming God, meaning Jesus. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. He's, he's confessing his sin out in public that we're supposed to do in church amongst each other. Churches don't do that. A lot of them do not. But you have to confess your sins. So he's confessing his sin right before God, right there on the cross. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, why would he call him Lord? Because he already knew him. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, as surely as I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. He got forgiveness for his sin on the cross. So, was he baptized? Yes. Why do I say this? Because you cannot enter paradise by Jesus' own words unless you are baptized. John chapter 3, verses 5 through 21. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of the water and spirit. Isn't it throughout the Bible that God knows everything? Just because you say that he wasn't baptized doesn't make it so. The very statement Jesus says that he will be in paradise with him shows he was baptized any other way any other story is false you then make God to be the liar and try to justify yourself from not getting baptized again baptize yourself in your house baptize your family members the book of Acts tells you, you must do this to enter the kingdom. Jesus did the Father's will. And to do the Father's will, it is in all things that Jesus did. Whatever Jesus did, you should be doing. But you will never hear Jesus 
being a liar or a sinner ever. Ever. So when you puff yourself up, it's by faith. It's not by works. I'm going to tell you, when you don't read the Bible, the whole work thing was like way back with the Pharisees, with, with the works of what you had to do by the law. And in your faith, yeah, you can believe that's Jesus, but you go to the book of Acts, yeah, they believed Jesus, but they weren't what? Baptized with water. The outpouring of the Spirit fell upon them, not within them. Are you getting it? So Jesus cannot go against his Father's will to let anyone, because no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless you do everything that Jesus did, including a water baptism and receiving the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, because you have to be a blameless person to enter heaven, meaning a spotless bride. We are part of his church, which the church is the bride, and we are the people residing in Jesus' bride, which we are the bride. I mean, people aren't getting it. We are part of the body of Christ. So if you are not baptized, you are going to hell. And then you want to throw up, what about the children? What about the children? I'm not God. Look, that's his word. And he's going to stay true to his word. It was your responsibility and everyone's responsibility to have your children baptized and all children baptized. So what you should be worrying about right now, who do you know in life that isn't baptized? I have got into it with a man on TikTok and I'm going to tell you in one hour it blew up like 700 people's comments on this guy um, calling me just horrible horrible things which I don't care I know the truth. And if, if you want to deny everything that Jesus did and don't want to follow what Jesus did and said, then that's on you. It is your soul. Because didn't he say, all that will say, Lord, 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 we did this. But did you get baptized and do his will, his ways? This man said this. That's the thing. There is no scripture that states you must be baptized to be saved. I stand by what scripture says, period. I got into it. I don't even know if I, I want to play this for you, but I think I should. Born of water and Where I... He cannot... I'm going to tell you. Enter the kingdom I, I had of God. righteous anger here. And believe me, this, this went on for um, a long time. So I have like um, on one seven, I, I had to upload it twice. And I'm going to let this, this man uh, claim to hear from God in, in a voice. And so I just told him, yes, make sure that you tell everyone they must be baptized. And this is where he lost his mind and started doing video after video of me, taking them down, putting them up, taking them down, me going back and forth. And I told him, be careful. You're in danger of blaspheming the Holy Ghost when, you, when you're starting to do things like this. And um, th through all of this, this man still stands firm that there is no scripture that states you must be baptized to be saved. I stand by what scripture says, period. When the written word of Jesus' own words. Now what you're going to listen to, I am sick with COVID. I have a fever right now. I am not well. And this is in such importance that this gets out. It's a long video. I cannot compress the truth into like 10 minutes, like on TikTok. I'm referring to what you are saying here. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Unless a man is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. 
Acts chapter 2 verse 38 through 41 and Peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off every one whom the Lord our God calls to him and he testified with many words and exhorted them saying save yourselves from this crooked generation so those who received his word were baptized and they were added that day 3,000 souls chapter 9 verses 17 through 8 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, both associate with the Holy Spirit with baptism. Acts chapter 22, verse 16, and now why do you wait? Rinse and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 4, or what don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ, Jesus, were baptized into his death we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father we too may live a new life first corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 and such were some of you but you were washed you were sanctified you were justified in the name of the lord jesus christ and in spirit of our god titus chapter 3 verse 5 he saved us not because of deeds done by us in righteousness but by virtue in his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21 baptism now saves you in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 through 41 alone we learn that baptism brings forgiveness of sins in dwelling into the Holy Spirit which no unregenerate person could possess salvation save yourselves and inclusion of the rank of saved soul Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 Romans chapter 6 verses 3 through 4 incorporates the blood and redeeming death of Jesus into baptism by referring to his death so he also does a larger passage of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 14 to 22 and chapter 4 verse 1 St. Peter asserts that baptism saves us. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. If a dispute arises as to whether baptism saves us or not, and an inspired Bible passage states baptism saves, and Mark 16, 16 also asserts that he who believes is baptized will be saved, are those not the answers to the very question being asked how could they be more plain and obvious than they are the larger larger passage of first peter 3 is very instructive the bible bible often uses natural things as symbols of super, supernatural ones for example jonah being in the belly of the whale three days and then emerging alive as a symbol of jesus being dead for three days and then rising many parables are similar john chapter 6 verse 38 i come down not to my own will but the will of him that sent me when you do god's will you do the baptism you do everything jesus does jesus does the will of the father matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23 not everyone who says to me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven and now Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 through 20 go out to all nations and baptize is a commandment in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost you are to baptize in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost it is a commandment of doing the Father's will and the Son did the Father's will who is Jesus Christ John baptizes Jesus chapter 3 verse 17 John chapter 3 verses 3 Jesus answered and said to him most assuredly I say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God meaning baptize Nicodemus said to him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and 
<coughs> and Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So everyone who is born of the spirit Here's your faith passage, chapter 3, John, chapter 3, verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he, do, he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light because of their deeds. I'm telling you right now, you are a false teacher and you are going to be judged. Matthew chapter 3 verse 15 through 17. But Jesus answered and said to him, permitted to be now, so now, for thus is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him, meaning John the Baptist, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God, meaning his Father, descending like a dove and, a light, and a lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You have to do all of the father's will. And Jesus fulfilled it. The thief on the cross was not a thief. If the thief was not baptized, he would not have entered into the kingdom of heaven. The thief on the cross repented and was forgiven by Jesus. There is nowhere in there that says that this person was not baptized. It points to every part of it that he was baptized because the multitudes were baptized. Jesus' fame, he was baptized. They went through all of Judea baptizing these people and he knew who God was. He said on the cross this. He believed that he is God. I'm telling you right now, you are a false teacher. Luke chapter 23, 39, verse 43. And the thief said this. The first criminal said, save, your, save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He already knew he was God. He had to have been reborn to know this. He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly. For we are getting our deeds deserved. He knew he had to repent and he didn't repent. So that's what it was all about, getting washed away from his sins. You cannot prove that this man on the cross was not baptized. He was baptized. You deny the very will of God the Father. That's why Jesus rebuked Peter and called him Satan for trying to stop the will of the Father. We are to do the whole will of God including Jesus Christ through the whole scripture. You are not baptized. You go to hell. And what I meant by the thief on the cross, he became a thief no more once he was forgiven and put into the kingdom. I know I was upset because I, I even said to this man, no one could be this stupid. What is the definition of stupid? Lack of common sense. I go to me. You must be a Freemason looking to sabotage the body of Christ. There are people out there that will do this, and I'm warning you of the wolves. Did you ever think that the enemy would go on a social media on purpose as this peaceful lamb and then go around telling people such things that that's the thing. There is no scripture that states you must be baptized to be saved. I stand by what scripture says. That is scripture. And he denies scripture. And I warned him. You are in danger of blaspheming the Holy Ghost. When you reject 
the Holy Ghost and you reject the water baptism, you are rejecting receiving the Holy Ghost. It'll be outpoured in the end of days that is talking about in the book of Acts. But when you blatantly say there's no scripture, when, I mean, people were on there telling him all the scripture, he was calling them the devil. He was calling them Satan. And I'm going to tell you what, it was an, an, in an hour and a half, this man upset so many people where I had to go back to a video because he did a video of me and called me everything that is ungodly. I, I don't even want to get into it, but if a person doesn't step in and tell the truth, that's what you get. And I even went as far as to go further into the Bible. If you are not born of the Spirit, you're not born of the Holy Ghost. You have to become blameless and, and not sin to that the Holy Ghost comes, but for for to for it to activate and you get the gift of tongues, you have to be blameless. Do you understand? Now we receive glorified bodies through God, okay? And it speaks about that. And I tried to I even told this man I loved him. I even blessed him. I even told everyone to bless him. And um, when we receive our glorified bodies, it, it comes apparent after you start really understanding the water baptism and the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, meaning you, you lived a, a blameless life. And then the, the disciples, they start talking about you get a transformed body like Jesus said that we will be like the angels in heaven so you get this transformed body so there is a process that is being told through this whole thing all the way through the book of revelations that tells what is going to happen to you as a person as a soul I am just trying to tell everyone if you don't read the gospel properly and you keep doing it sentence by sentence, you will perish. Jesus even said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And I'm telling you, there are people that are purposefully like him because I told him, I wasn't born yesterday. I believe you are sabotaging the church of Jesus Christ on purpose to deceive them not to be baptized. And I told him, I believe you to be a Freemason because I know their very nature. Because I was raised by one. Maybe I'll talk about that someday. But I'm going to tell you guys what. Listening to hearsay on TikTok. That place is the gutter. And I make sure I visit the gutter often. And I make sure in this gutter. I am giving scripture. And the sentences you have to leave there are small. You have to compress everything. Here, I, I'm trying to compress this, and I'm already way long. I'm just trying to um, spread the truth and the gospel. You don't get baptized. You will go to hell.